Hi, I'm Brent Johnson. And I'm Nathan Laube. And we're in Philadelphia for the Pipe Organ Encounter 2018. We're on day three, it's the second full day of the Pipe Organ Encounter. It started just like yesterday, the students had breakfast and then they were off to their private lessons and practice time with their appointed teachers. Nathan, you're on the faculty here and you have two students. Uh, you're teaching them there on the campus of Girard College. Exactly. Um, yes. Not every student gets to practice right there where they're staying. Uh, it, a lot of the students have to be carried off to other churches and that requires the volunteer efforts of a lot of members of the Philadelphia AGO. Um, I'm guessing your students are probably rather advanced organists. They're fantastic. I mean, that's one of the things that I'm always amazed by at these at these uh, uh, pipe organ encounters is just how high the level of playing is. It's an amazing mix and uh, particularly um, what I'm also always inspired by is to see how you do have students you know playing very sophisticated literature already at a very high level mm -hmm. um, uh, on the one hand and then you have students who are really coming to the organ sometimes for the first time and there's also that's a very inspiring thing to watch because there's an amazing synergy there you see the the more advanced students uh, inspiring the younger the, the younger students. Sometimes they are the youngest ones, the most advanced <laughs> ones. It just depends, yeah. And uh, you see them inspiring the students who are uh, more new to the instrument. And on the on the other hand, you see the students who um, are more advanced and already have an understanding of the instrument. I think also remembering what it was like also to be <laughs> at that first one where you are just discovering, because that's a very special moment. You know, one that I remember. Very, very clearly. We should add the students here are age 13 to 18, so there's a wide range of potential uh, variability there. And there are students who are brand new to the organ that that's are right. getting their first taste here at the Pipe Organ Encounter, and that's what it's made for, is to help, help we rope them in and get exactly. them back. So after their lessons, uh, they were bused here to Bryn Athen Cathedral, uh, where they had lunch, and then they divided into two groups. We had an improvisation uh, master class, yeah. which was fascinating to watch. They all, every student got a chance to improvise and he just used a simple tune, Amazing Grace, uh, to p practice with both melodic and harmonic improvisation and it was interesting to watch. Some of them are really anxious and great at it, others are a little more timid, so it was nice to see the interaction, again, between older and more experienced and younger students. Exactly, and I think this is so important, the, uh, the art of improvisation and just having the sort of comfort of being able to do that. And I think like anything else, the earlier you become unafraid, of improvising. The earlier you simply just take that leap and get on the bicycle, so to speak, and, and go do it, um, the easier it is to come to it later too. Um, uh, I think that was a lucky thing for me as a kid, is that I always somehow improvised. And so it wasn't this big scary thing. And it's amazing to see these kids also, uh, so many of them just so eager to try it. And so uh, there's no long, there's not that pressure, you know, when you get to college and all of a sudden you have to take a class in improvisation. Here it's, oh, let's, you know, let's do something. Let's. Let's it's, make music. Let's use this language we all speak. It's very good to see them getting a wide range of experience there. Absolutely. They actually had to divide in two groups to do that. The other group went on a tour of a museum here, so they actually got some art exposure while they were here. Uh, and then they traded places, and yeah. then they each did the other's group. Staggering after, place. Uh, yeah, after that, they got a tour of this beautiful cathedral, yeah. uh, which is an amazing building. If you're ever in Philadelphia, come see this place. After that, we were treated to a concert by five Pipe Organ Encounter alums, students who are now in college, who went through Pipe Organ Encounters when they were younger. And uh, much like yourself, you attended yeah. these. Um, I think I went to my, first of all, it was a fantastic concert, uh, oh, very, yes. very beautiful and engaging playing. And uh, it's been amazing for me to watch actually everybody who played on the program today, I've known for some time mm. or been able to sort of observe, you know, from a distance even. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to see, you know, all of these laureates who are now doing really, really wonderful and tremendous things. Um, so a beautiful concert. Uh, yeah, I went to my first pipe organ encounter when I was 11 mm. and that was in Rochester, Minnesota, I think. Well, I'm not going to do the math right, to figure fine, out what yeah. that was, but it was a while ago. Um, and uh, anyway, it was, uh, again, that was that was the experience where I was the little kid just, <gasps> you know, and hearing someone play the Vito Toccata or hearing someone play the Last Moon of the Vierne for Symphony, and you think, oh my God, I want to be able to do that. And, uh, and then subsequently I attended three others um, in uh, Western Connecticut, in Rochester, New York, and in Pittsburgh. And then since then, I think I probably taught at seven or eight of them. And uh, mm -hmm. each one has been a fabulous experience. Well, and it's that's something we've heard is that students who have benefited from pipe organ encounters want to come back and help out and oh, bring up absolutely. the next young next generation absolutely. of organists. It's, uh, it, w there's no question when you're invited to a pipe organ encounter there's kind of one there's one answer. <laughs>
what I've also noticed in just watching is just to see how they've raised the bar mm. of playing too. It's a very there's a very healthy um, encouragement and a, and a slight competitive bent to it. Not in that they're really competing, but they remember what they saw and heard last year. And then they think, oh, next year for the mm. next pipe organ encounter, I want to be able to play that piece. Or maybe even another one, even a step higher. And I think it's just raised the bar of, of playing and, um, and it's been such an inspiration in terms of uh, creating a really ambitious, ambitious young organ culture. And that's really exciting to see, very much so. So after the concert, the students all headed back to Girard College for dinner and a little relaxation time and playing in the gym, as kids will do. I was impressed. I didn't realize that a lot of these kids know each other from previous pipe organ encounters. There were some that I saw interacting that were just picking up old friendships. That's right. uh, these kids actually make these relationships and keep them going from year to year. So that's exactly. great to see, too. It's a lot of effort from the Philadelphia AGO chapter to put all of one of these together. Um, so uh, we thank them for all their hard work, both in getting the students where they need to be and planning these great programs and getting people like Nathan here uh, to work with the students. We also thank APOBA, the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America, who make these possible through their funding and make it possible for us to be here, uh, bringing it to you. This is a group of 31 organ builders who uphold stringent standards in pipe organ building. If you're interested in knowing how you can have a quality pipe organ, like the Keg pipe organ we heard tonight, uh, Charlie Keg is an APOBA member Very builder. Beautiful. beautiful instrument in there. Just go to apoba.org, A-P-O-B-A.org. Be sure to subscribe to see future videos. I'm Brent Johnson. And I'm Nathan Lauba. I'll see you tomorrow.